How are you all doing? How's everyone doing today? Good, good, good. How are you? Good. Great. Um, so Arnold, I want to start with you just because I'm uh, jumping off from the press notes and that you had sort of the um, the genesis of the idea because you're a historian, reader, and we're reading about the story of the, the porters and the, um, the first union. And I think it's so fascinating having got a chance to watch the show to see how many threads are, are brought in, you know, that there's many different plot lines and they're woven together so well. So how does the origin of the story sort of lead into what is now the uh, finished product? I feel so bad because the team has heard it, you know, yeah. <laughs> today, but this is what a press junket is. So, yeah, uh, it, it was just uh, my desire to want to uh, uh, talk to my parents or share with my parents about this uh, new country, which we immigrated to from from England. They're originally from Jamaica and just to share with them black stories about people that look like them. And they got a big kick out of that. And in turn, I got a big kick about, you know, being able to uh, share stuff about Black history, Black Canadian history with my parents. But in doing so, uh, what happened was there was one common denominator that kept on showing up, um, and that was uh, porters. And uh, once I went down that rabbit hole, I just found it so fascinating to find out that these uh, young men and women from not just uh, south of the border, but from these small islands in the Caribbean, Jamaica, Trinidad, you know, um, Barbados, Grenada, and so on, they made their way over here. And in the process of being given these supposedly subservient uh, or servitude jobs, they changed the policy. They changed Canadian policy. They formed the biggest uh, Black union at that time. And that really, really empowered me, uh, especially the fact that, you know, my parents and, you know, being from Jamaican lineage, it's just the fact that that small island, we came here and we did that. So from there, you know, um, uh, Bruce Ramsey and I, uh, who is the other uh, co-creator and originator of the show, we embarked on this um, uh, <laughs> on this plight to uh, get this story going. So that's where the Montreal sort of connection came in. We were in Montreal doing some research in um, uh, Little Burgundy, which is St. Antoine at the time that we were doing it. And we came across this building called the Negro Community Center, which was all boarded up. And on it, it had murals of Oliver Jones and Oscar Petersons and so on. And we had learned that that's where uh, young Black people went to learn, uh, not just to learn how to play the piano, as Oscar Peterson's sister was doing, but also other crafts and, you know, uh, woodworking and so on. And we thought if possibly we could get this show going, we could maybe help to finance to keep that thing going. And unfortunately, two years later, it was torn down. But in doing so, it empowered us instead of stopping us, empowered us to move forward. And um, we were very grateful to be able to um, pitch CBC at the time. They got on board as well as Sienna Films. And then comes our beautiful team here. Mm -hmm. uh, because realistically, what happens is, is that you need a team like this, which kind of resembles the union of the time for us to build this union now for something like this to be uh, made. In a nutshell, I'm gonna, that's it. I'm gonna try to not, you know, get you to repeat too much from what you said today or uh, from the press notes, but I wanna uh, I put this question out to the team. In a show like this, uh, what fascinates me a lot is watching a story from 100 years ago and how much of it feels modern, contemporary, uh, like today, and how much of it feels like it is 100 years ago. So what's that like in the creative process? In terms of themes in particular, how much of it feels like you're telling a story about right now as opposed to 100 years ago? I think that um, certainly when you approach a historical story, you are thinking about how is it going to resonate today? Mm -hmm. And so for us, it was... I think it, in some ways, uh, I was going to say exciting, and then that sounded weird, but it, but it was exciting in a way to find these moments that we knew people would say like, oh, I get that. Like, I've been that. I've been in that situation. I've seen that. And to find those moments while still kind of showing this history of, uh, because what it does, we hope, is that it shows people like, you know, there are these 
forces um, of oppression that exist, and there are ways to resist it, and there are different ways to resist it. And here are, you know, four, six, 12 people who are all finding their own way through that. And so definitely it was, there were moments in the writing and in the filming that were hard, that were challenging emotionally because it resonates so much. But mm -hmm. then at the same time, we we knew it would touch the audiences and, and hope that the story as a whole would inspire them as it has inspired us to kind of keep pushing forward just in our regular challenges of getting this show off the ground and bringing it to the audience. I'll put this out again to the creative. What I like is that you hit so many beats. In the a few episodes I've seen, there are moments that I really feel like resonate, as you were just saying. Um, what do you think is something that, you know, I could just read the episode descriptions of what's upcoming, but it seems like there's a lot more. Um, what were some of those moments or what were some of those beats that you really enjoyed seeing on screen? I mean, for me, I love the the moment of just sheer joy and celebration and love and laughter and things like dominoes at the back of the beard, you know, like that's our, the memories of childhood with your uncles and your so, because, you know, when you're dealing with such a deep and, and heavy and painful struggle, that's all you need it's what gets you through is those joy and, and it's and it's the energy of the church and it's the and it's the pride of the community. So I think when I saw those moments spark to life, it really, it really, you know, did something to me and took me to to a good place. Charles, I'll bring you in because you directed the first two episodes, which I'd seen, and I noticed there's some commonalities. You'd work with a few of the actors for Aquila's Escape as well, too. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about that process with working with actors that you are familiar with and then those that you're sort of, you know, working with for the first time on this project. It's, it's, uh, it speaks to the idea of community, but it's um, also, it's fortunate if you get to work with actors that you, you, um, you enjoy working with and 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 by the powers of certain circumstances you you get to do it again on another project because by no way in 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 this configuration that it was like oh yeah i work with these guys you're just going to end up in this show <laughs> like it was a very rigorous long process um uh, building our cast because it's like it's one thing to find individuals who are talented but it's also the energy that they bring um, to the atmosphere that I think that was very important to us, um, knowing that this is going to be a long haul and, and the demands are going to be pretty, pretty, pretty heavy. Um, we needed to 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 bring individuals that we we know, we trust, that we've that we um, feel felt felt like was fitting, you know, uh, the whole grand scheme of things and. Um, so it was awesome to work with Ronnie again and Olunuke and. Bruce Ramsey and I've worked with Arnold before as an actor and 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 that gives you uh, it actually take it scratches some things off the list because when you're building your relationship with actors you haven't worked with it's like you know you got to start from the ground and get to know them and, and and it's nice to be like okay I understand some things about these individuals so I don't have to you know panic about this so much um, um, because you know communication is key and and how you communicate commu communicate and how actors communicate in their process and each actor is an individual and there isn't just one set way of working and and our jobs are to be adaptable to that and understand and kind of be be um wise to watching out for for those the 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 way that someone works so we can actually help support them and um but i'm telling you it's like the Eugene Buffos, like William Winnipeg based, you know, actor who came out of nowhere. Um, little Jerome who played, uh, you know, Teddy Massey came out of nowhere. Like these beautifully talented, and I mean, the list goes on, um, you know, Juliette who plays Corinne, like we, 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 we went beyond like our, our because we had to of, of finding actors in, in other spaces and, um, and building those new relationships were, were wonderful. And the one thing about the cast that did come on, they, they, the common thing that came back to us that they were, they were so committed to this project. They were so, 
they were so um, blown away that, that, that this was a, a piece of work that they were going to actually participate in. You know, us, you know, the blessing of, of Alfre Woodard, who became our godmother uh, in, in um, I mean, in so many aspects of that word, um, you know, she, she did so much beyond acting in the show. Like, you know, the conversation I would overhear her having with, with uh, Muna, who played Marlene, and with Sabrin, who, who, you know, who, who played Gwen, like to hear how she was talking to them as women, as artists um, in the work and around the work was stunning. You know, she put on a clinic. Amel Amin, this British actor who I've loved from when he was a kid in, in some obscure series that I've always wanted to work with this guy. Um, um, and by the, by the way that this, you know, things unfolded, it, it happened. So this was kind of a dream scenario. Um, Marsha and I work with like young Adrian Walters on like his first television um, gig ever. And, and to see this young man over the years just grow and become the next, you know, young Sidney Poitier. Um, like, and then to see him here taking on this role and, and giving it and just fitting in with these guys, like it, it is, uh, it gives me chills because that is exactly what I think one of the reasons why I do this work is the canvas and seeing these young, amazing, you know, talented people with melanin in their skin, like coming up and rising up and, and, and showing improving. And it's, and it's, uh, it's beautiful. I would want to ask more, but this is my time. Uh, I want to thank you all. Um, I just wanted to say what, it, how amazing it is to see an, an all black creative team and to see what's come from the show to hit those beats. And I cannot wait for everyone to see the show. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much.